Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have another uh, Seiko update for you guys. Here you see uh, my three Seiko Alpinists all laid out. Uh, the focus of this particular video is going to be on the bracelets, particularly the bracelet in the middle on my blue Alpinist. Now, uh, before I jump into that, some of you, I'm going to have to understand, are not you know already avid viewers of my channel so i will be going into some general review points uh for the seiko alpinist in general so of course a little bit about the brand seiko was founded back in 1881 they are japanese in origin and now have factories throughout asia they actually cover all market segments from very entry level to actually very very high end now as far as the type of watch here uh i would consider this an everyday watch some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for something you can be worn every day of course, you're going to want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes, which I think the Alpinist really, really nails. Now, this model in the middle is actually the SPB089, which is a U.S. limited edition. This is number 904 out of uh, nine. I'm sorry, 19. 159. So out of 1959, this is number 904. Um, Essentially, it is, of course, an adventurer's watch uh, that really extends back to the original line dating back uh, all the way to 1961. Uh, this was originally available for $600, the Blue Alpinist, that is, um, and now can go for anywhere between eight to uh, $1,500. So very interesting for uh, the space, <laughs> definitely for your uh, your Seikos. But I think there are a lot of points to why it's so collectible and because it was so limited. It's basically the watch that kind of saved the Alpinist line. So you can see the green dial, which is the Saab uh, 017, essentially, and then the black dial there, which is the new Prospects Alpinist. So uh, basically, without that blue dial there in the middle, uh, we might have never seen the next generation of Alpinist ever get born so uh, that just goes to show it's a real testament to how important this watch was and how crucial it was and really confirming with Seiko that the demand was there for such a niche watch I mean it, it's definitely a very niche thing and there was real huge enthusiasts there still are huge enthusiasts of the Alpinist line but it was far from mainstream um, really until the blue Alpinist came out and more and people started really taking notice of wow this is a cool little model so Guys, here's the thing. This bracelet on the middle, some of you guys have watched my videos. I did one, you know, hey, the best uh, bracelet you never knew about for your Alpinist. This is actually just like the best bracelet uh, that Seiko makes for it. Yes, this is an OEM Seiko bracelet that's on that Blue Alpinist. And I'm really excited to share it with you guys because it's been one of those things where within the forums, within the Facebook groups, within here and there, it's kind of like a sleeper. Uh, bracelet you know you see it mentioned you see a couple of pictures sometimes people you see pictures and people don't even remember what reference they got it under right I do have the reference here so I will share that with you all so with all that said let's go ahead and take a closer look all right guys so what we'll start with here is the nice thing is we have them all on bracelet uh, of course you have really the first mainstream alpinist here uh, with the Sarb model and uh, it's actually on what many kind of consider the OEM strap, the OEM bracelet for this. Very popular, um, and honestly, it's what the new model uh, is bracelet, is bracelet is essentially based on. So they're actually interchangeable. They're great. It has the female end link, so it doesn't extend the case. Uh, I think the uh, the links themselves are nicely proportioned with the, the thicker center links and the thinner outer links. Uh, generally, the proportions are actually quite nice too. Uh, it's part of what makes the Seiko's uh, very comfortable. Um, and then a nice thing is you actually do have the milled clasp and this really nice chamfering uh, and and uh, basically cutouts here, as you can see, that make it a softer wear around the wrist. So those are nice touches. You also do get the two micro adjusts. So that's the standard it's actually in the old model it's in the new model which i think is an absolute value um, and probably one of the best modern seikos at this point to, to kind of own now guys here's what we came for look at this guy here that's right seiko 
and it even has of course that beautiful you know those center link outer center link uh, high polished accents it does have a male end link but the nice thing is because it's really well designed you can see it actually flows super well with the case also you're not getting the little marking that you get here as you can see when this link may be the way you're storing it or whatever it can go and come into contact with this opening in the female link and then it kind of can leave a little bit of spotting there just a little bit now here you're not gonna have to worry about it. also it's all uh, you know quite comparable in terms of scale so it's gonna wear just like this one um, and it even has a similar clasp slightly different uh, from here you can see the Seiko is a little bit different uh, but let's quickly look at these two also very close though these ones are a little bit closer but as you can see slightly different to this model here uh, it does have the pushers uh, it also does have the two micro adjusts uh, the clasp is slightly different you can see the folding mechanism here doesn't have the contouring that this one does so that's kind of you know uh, and it's probably honestly because this was meant to be worn on a sportier watch so they did think about that on your wrist this is going to be adding another little kind of extra touch of comfort versus here this strap was actually meant for uh, kind of a more dressy model uh, it's actually from a pre-presage sarks um, well, Sarks, uh, SARW, the SSA, and SRP. So basically before these were uh, branded presage models, um, there was a couple within the range that actually wore this particular bracelet and it is interchangeable. And it, when I say interchangeable, I mean there's no modifications to be done. You don't need to put in any weird things with spring bars, no curved spring bars, none extra short, extra long, whatever. It just fits absolutely perfectly like it was made for it. Everything lines up beautifully. There's no extra give. It actually just sits in there really nicely. And I gotta say, although at certain angles within pictures you've probably seen, it can make this center kind of like protrusion on the male end link seem extra long. But when you actually look at it in real life, like in a 3D nature, it's you can see here that it doesn't stick out that bad. It's just really when it catches it at an angle where it lays flat, which is gonna be typically when you do your wrist shots, right? It's gonna make it extend and look a little bit longer, but when you actually look at it, it doesn't really stick out very much. Uh, so that's just one of those things. It is more of a, you know, a deception of the eye. Um, and uh, I gotta say, this thing wears absolutely beautifully. Um, so, you know what, let's actually start getting these on wrist and uh, switch back and forth and talk some more shop on these. All right guys, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this thing looks gorgeous, look at that. I love the design, I think it flows, it just really dresses it up. Obviously here, you have the more toolish design with the three link, which looks great. But for me, with this blue dial, the blue sunray, obviously the special nature of this watch and what it is, um, man, it's tough to argue with this one. And it's OEM, so it's like gives you that. I mean, as much as I love Seiko mods, you know, the OEM plus styling is something that I really, really do appreciate. Again, uh, just to kind of talk a little bit more about the history of these watches, you know, this one's available for something like, God, 15 years um, plus. And it just became this sleeper hit. Uh, it gained so much notoriety because it's 200 meters of water resistance, this insanely interesting blue, I'm sorry, green dial with these crazy gilt indexes and everything and highlights. Uh, it has an OEM bracelet option. It comes on a brown strap. Uh, it's just this interesting thing. It has this cool looking kind of roulette wheel like compass 
inside. Um, it's just, it's a fantastic watch, and because of the end rate exchange, you're able to get these for like 400 bucks or less. So really great deal, in-house everything, sapphire crystal, milled clasp, uh, folding section, you know, so really nice from that standpoint, and I can see why they caught on so much fire. Just people love these things, and they wear really nicely. Um, you know, a lot of the times they were advertised as a 38, but really they're about a 39 and a half. They just have these really great contours. So there was this watch really just making a fuss and then they discontinued them and it was like, oh no, it's going away. It's just another great uh, model now gone. Then Seiko USA decided, hey, let's actually put out a limited edition. Let's put out this blue bad boy right here. And guys, again, if you want a full review on these Alpinists, definitely check the rest of my channel. I have various reviews on these. I even have like strap showcases um, as well. Uh, but this is just kind of the, the broad general history. So then this thing comes out. The nice thing is they actually paired with a Hodinkee. And although this isn't like a Hodinkee watch, it was actually just a US exclusive. So Seiko USA exclusive and Hodinkee was actually one of the only official vendors to be able to carry this. Essentially, uh, you could either buy it from Seiko or you could buy it from Hodinkee. And, and yeah, it, it went super fast. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful watch. I'm a sucker for blue dials. I love how dark this blue dial is, how rich it is. I love the way the color play is on it, the way the light shifts, and it just gives you so many different reads. Um, my only kind of uh, complaint about it is that uh, it doesn't have an AR coating in the crystal, so there are times uh, certain lighting, it, it just, it doesn't negotiate the, the sh glare quite as nicely as this new model here with the uh, super clear coat on there. You can just see that, of course, when there's something like directly shining on it, it doesn't do it great, uh, you know, but when you look there, you can see like, just how easily you can get a read on that dial, which is very, very nice. It does also have a Cyclops, which not everybody's crazy about, but I think this thing is just super versatile. It's great. Also, what they added was a see-through case back for the first time, which I think is great. The original model had this great uh, little, you know, the Alpinist symbol there written out, and then here on the blue dial you got something a little special as well because now you get the numbered back with a slightly different this is more of an etched finish versus the kind of stamped little kind of a deeper engrave on there versus here it's more of an etching but it's very clean and very crisp there so really nice and i feel like this bracelet with its you know kind of grand seiko-esque qualities it's it's really beautiful and i think it really suits especially with the blue dial i mean there's a part of me that was like hey why don't i put kind of the best bracelet on the best watch which is the black one but i think the black one you know this prospects alpinist it's just sporty and toolish and i think that this bracelet suits it perfectly well it doesn't i don't want it to be dressier maybe if i had like the cream dial or white dial variant uh or even maybe the green dial there's there's a new green dial as well maybe i would do it but there's just something about the blue dial and this bad boy right here so guys the nomenclature on this it's also inside of my video description so you can check that some of you might have already checked and you're already jumping you're already searching but it is the m o p f one 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 j o so o's and zeros you're gonna have to you know maybe jump around with uh but you can copy and paste directly from the information within the video description if you want to look for this um, and various dealers will be able to get you this one so it's not like hey there's just one place I'm sure people who bought them in the past have gotten from a couple different places uh, I was able to luckily snag one while it was in stock at uh, at actually a website that I've used a few times for things like the uh, Seiko mini turtle bracelet because I bought the blue dial variant which comes on a strap so I got the bracelet from there and of course I got this bracelet bracelet from that same place and yeah there's a bunch of uh, dealers that actually do stock replacement parts because Seiko is so 
huge, right? Which is nice. Um, I guess really quickly uh, what we can talk about generally for these watches um, is just some of the specs for those of you that don't know. Again, 200 meters water resistance, uh, in-house movements. Here you have the 6R15, 6R15, 6R35. The difference here is you're gonna get that extended power reserve. So you're gonna get 70 hours of power reserve, which is great. Um, also 200 meters of water resistance. You got screw down crowns, the original signed crown, the blue signed crown, the new Prospects no signed crown. And that is really more so just because no Prospects watches have signed crowns, at least not any uh, non-special editions that I know of, at least as they're making them now. They, they tend to do that over across the line. They'll just kind of make everything uh, a little bit the same. And I think it does. it is nice uh, for kind of uniformity's sake. Um, and also it helps, uh, you know, not cross over. So if you want something with a signed crown, typically you'd go for a presage. Uh, if you want something more sporty, then uh, it wouldn't have a signed crown. At least that's kind of their new model. Now, uh, this guy here, it really has very similar dimensions. Of course, this bracelet, it does taper down essentially. It goes 20 to 18. You got the twin trigger. I mean, it is a different clasp itself, but you can see when you look at this, it even has similar length there when you look at it's a it's a little bit of i think a little bit of a more noticeable taper um which is nice but it, they taper to the same width at the bottom and they're just this is just a great looking timepiece honestly i hadn't worn my blue alpinist in a long long time and this bracelet kind of just reinvigorated and rejuvenated it for me so actually let's do some loom shots low light transition just so you guys can get a better look at this bracelet and uh kind of uh, it, in all of its glory and majesty all right guys we'll go ahead and hit the lights here as you can see <laughs> These are not known for their loom. They're not divers, they're not loom beasts. They actually have pretty small plots of loom on there. The nice thing is that it is Seiko's proprietary loom bright. So it's actually quite bright considering the actual surface uh, area application there. There's not much room. I think those uh, cathedral hands are quite readable. What I like to do here is really get this low light transition going because you're not always gonna be out in the middle of the you know out in the middle of a field out in direct sunlight chances are you're going to be in some other form of less than optimal lighting so i like to do this low light transition because sometimes you're going to be transitioning in and out of a building in and out of a vehicle underneath a shady little tree there down a hallway guys and one of the nice things is especially with this blue you can really get an idea of the depth and the color change and the shift and the color play and how this is gonna render in your typical situation. You can see that matted finish that is on top that can kind of catch the light in certain times that disappear and just allow the sun ray to really hit. This is a really high contrast dial. When I say high contrast, I mean that you're gonna get very bright, vibrant blues surrounded by near black kind of midnight. Even here in this really bright light, you can see it's just more of a midnight blue uh, close to black there and then I think of course that outer slide bezel looks really beautiful and plays really well even though it is a bit of a different texture also what you can see is these beautiful just the finishing on this bracelet it's really really well done guys it's not Grand Seiko or anything but man does it do the job really beautifully done guys really digging that even if you get to the harsher lighting here really high contrast you can see some of the wear around that high polished bezel um, really getting exposed but now when you look at that same light oh, as the way it goes over the brushing it tells a different story for this bracelet it shows really how finely done it is and how uniform the light just glides and rolls over that brushing uh, really lets you know that there's a real nice point of quality there. So big kudos to Seiko for that, although they don't advertise that this fits, they probably don't even know that it fits. But 
maybe some one of their execs will be watching this and they'll make a note they can save some money by using this exact bracelet maybe on a future release now closing thoughts on this guys on the wrist very sporty yet compact wear which is great it's something that uh you know it can suit a smaller wrist but even on a larger wrist it still has a lot of great presence uh as far as comparable models go guys i mean this thing has been compared to quite a few along the way but off the top of the head we got the zen 556 glycine airman 18 the notice duality Boulder Expedition, uh, Traska Summiteer, and even Seiko's very own Seiko 5 Sports Dress KX slash XK Explorer model. I think uh, when it comes to, and then they're actually going to be bringing another Alpinist uh, esque type watch uh, without the slide bezel should be being released sometime uh, in the last quarter of the year so I'm looking forward to that that's going to be another great option as well uh, really guys bottom line here this is a bona fide classic taken to an absolute another level um, this is the modern Alpinist to have from a collector's perspective that is I mean it is the last one to bear the Alpinist branding and many will even call the new prospects Alpinist just Alpinist in inspired guys. So this is kind of the last, you know, at least the one to bear the mark Alpinist there on its case back. And of course, you know, it's they're they're really fetching crazy offers, uh, well above the original list price. Sometimes close to double or more, right? Because I mean, anywhere from eight hundred to fifteen hundred bucks for a six hundred dollar watch. It just goes to show how much value is packed in there and how much of a market there still is for this watch, which is great. Um, and that's even after the six R thirty five equipped Prospects release. So I mean, you would think that if it was you know fake hype, then it would have died down. But honestly, people still want this piece is still very desirable and hard to get um for me again the thing that makes it really special is this is kind of the watch that saved the line this saved the alpinist name uh which i think is a beautiful thing it proved to sago that there was demand for this relatively niche model um and that it was something worth continuing and the watches that have continued to come from within this line are absolutely amazing and a lot of that has to do with the hype train that the blue alpinist was able to help create and foster so with that said guys i love it on this bracelet i'm keeping it on it i'm not even I, as much of as, as i love to put these things on natos and different types of straps uh tactical straps i think this is the perfect bracelet for it and it's OEM. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.